Did you look at the ultimate traffic? I have sent Did you. Did you look at the ultimate traffic? Because I think it's cool for you. It has maybe um, AI traffic, real world AI traffic. Okay. I see. So did you... So which cruising altitude are we expecting? Okay. All right. Yep. So we're going to do the leg three again that I had an issue with. Um, I did a recap a couple of days ago where we figured out that it was actually the empty or the de-ice or the ice protection was off on my engine one that made my engine fail and then ultimately led to a secondary engine failure so i got schooled by christopher by chris disaster who explained to me hey guys um to basically consider de-icing or putting de-ice or ice protection on the engine on after takeoff when temperature is below 15 degrees centigrade and um above minus five so in between the range of plus 15 to minus five um and i looked at the weather report and that's exactly the conditions i had so there's no surprise here why my engine failed um and this won't happen today so we're flying vatsim just to have both airplanes visible to each other but we we probably don't have a lot of radar contact up here. We might have something in Goose Bay, but in Stephenville, the airport is very small. Uh, it's a it's a local airport, and there's only one runway active at this point. So yeah, uh, and Christopher should be spawning in on parking yeah, two over here. I so he should show up any second. I want to tell people. Prepare for the my position because he wants me to put on the runway and that's not what I want. Yeah, go on parking too. Yeah. I can't, no choice to tell him. What's the problem here? Uh, we'll see. <coughs> we'll see. Yeah. The weather is actually pretty now. Oh, actually, I didn't start Rex yet. So let me uh, let me get the weather injected pretty good here looks like there's a little thunderstorm above us yeah um i was actually surprised when i logged into stephenville and the weather looked so nice but then i realized i don't have weather on right so let's get weather active and let's start the weather injection Let's see how that changes the... So I'm pretty sure it's going to be cold, which means we will have to do engine de-ice after takeoff. It's actually fairly easy to start up that airplane compared to a A320. So I think it was not necessary to actually load the route in so yeah it's raining over here just spawn in weather is not that great over here let me see what's the temp do we have temperature here right now it is exactly 10 degrees celsius so yeah. Yep. And altimeter, 
it's interesting. Altimeter is zero nine nine seven right now. Q and H. Yeah. So very low pressure. Yeah, actually, um, I got a message that an alert when I watched my app. Says yeah. Pressure is dropping immediately. Yeah, let me see what the uh, the the app that you recommended. To. Yeah, it's actually pretty accurate. On the app, it says nine 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 eight, and um, over regs, I get nine nine seven. So that's within the well, margin of error. Nine nine seven point nine, actually. Oh yeah, you're right. So okay, so they just round it down, but it's fine for for my purposes. That's that's all good. Um, let me see the weather report. What we got? Uh, we have. Oh, no, that was the problem. Now it takes forever again, I guess. Uh, visibility is six or more miles. Uh, light rain, mist, scattered clouds at twelve hundred feet, broken clouds at eight hundred eighteen hundred feet, and overcast at two thousand four hundred feet. So that's the overcast is pretty low right now. And temperature is nine degrees centigrade. Uh, the dew point is seven degrees, which is just two. Um, degrees below the temperature humidity 87 percent so we definitely need anti-dis um after our takeoff maybe at around well, 1500 feet it what took that long fuck you i'm sorry for saying that but so i switched to for, it was actually ifr automatically in when i selected the flight planner <clears throat> Which doesn't make much uh, difference for us, but did you select VFR in the? Yes, I did. It takes forever. The prepare for the switching over takes forever. Yeah, and that's what I mean. It it doesn't make any different actually difference for us because it's the same route. So it's actually just to tell the prepare for the ATC that we are in VFR so or IFR so they. So simulating sending in a, a flight plan, you know, to the ATC off the plane. So it doesn't make any for a difference for our routing. Uh, 8%, 9%. So you see it's MVFR. Looks like this is special VFR. MVFR, I have not had that simple so far. M VFR. That's interesting. I have to Google that because usually you have VMC or IMC. You can either fly VMC conditions or if this is not possible, you have to fly an IMC. Just if you are on a controlled airport, you can have special VM VFR rules, mm -hmm. which is not really IMFR flying, but you can have less uh, cloud. Distance, gotcha. You know, because the basic rule is um, to stay away. Uh, I don't know the distances right now. It's five kilometers in front of you. There is not. A, there is no clouds allowed. So M V F R. What does that mean? Oh, I get a message. <clears throat> It's a marginal VFR flight. I see. It, but it's a difference between special VFR and marginal VFR. So actually we are a marginal VFR now there because it seems to be... So basically, it's a kind of special VFR. It's actually special VFR in Europe. It's marginal VFR in the US. <clears throat> I see. I see why, because it's, uh, yeah, it's rainy. It's actually no, not conditions you would fly out with. Yeah, I know. It's not the best flying weather today. But we can do it. Actually, it's not that bad. 
There's some scattered clouds. Sorry, I have, I have to close. I have to shut the the pre prepare. It's with fifty percent. You know what? What you gotta do? Just don't worry about it. Doing it over P3D. We can just enter it into our yeah, Garmin. Yeah. It's easier. So you're used to the Garmin already? Yeah, yeah. I, it took me a little bit to figure out, you know, the quirks of entering stuff, but I finally got a hold of it. It's Once not the mo let's say it like this. It's not the most intuitive for a computer. In real life, it's probably more intuitive, but it's, you know, the clicking yeah, it and... Is. It is, in real life. The good thing with the Garmin, you can, when you can, um, when you can, when you can use one, you can use any Garmin, you know? Mm -hmm. Like an iPhone. So yeah, I'm on fuel box. The, the only thing you need to do is basically select the airport, make sure that you have the right time, which right now it's uh, 15... 12 right local time um and just go on f on r what is it parking two i think it was and we can just enter it into um into our garmin manually yeah I look at, at at project fly and the weather is is showing basically a band of clouds directly over where we are but as soon as we head over over the the water um we are basically good and when we head up to newfoundland which is where we are going to goose bay um we should be fine it sh there should be not a lot of issues with us getting there i'm actually gonna show that here real quick where we're going so this is basically a recap of our original flight that i did a couple of <clears throat> couple of days ago i think it was on sunday um where I tried to fly from Stephenville to Goose Bay, but then P3D crashed, which was annoying. And so where we're going today is Goose Bay. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to get some mileage north before I'm actually taking over to Greenland. And I mentioned that before. Uh, the next airport, the Leg 4, will be... Uh, I, I, I'm having really, I'm really struggling pronouncing, but I think it's Narsakwak Airport, um, and that's gonna be a four and a half hour to five hour flight over the Atlantic. Um, so yeah, I want to minimize the impact of that lag a little bit. Again, as Christopher said, not the best flying weather, but we will. We'll have a good time. And he agreed to join me today. Um, also in a Coronado. So we're going to fly in company. And we're going to take 27. Actually, let me see where the wind is coming from right now. On windy.com. I think it's coming from the north. Um, windy.com. Good to have that app, actually. Okay, let me see. The wind is coming. Well, for our purposes, in all honesty, it makes not a single difference because it comes from the side. It comes... <laughs> yeah, it's coming from, from the south. And the... Runway is going east west. Of a takeoff, but it's good for flight, no? Yeah, we have side wind. No, we're going north and we have the wind in the back. In the back. Yeah, while we're flying, but for takeoff, I mean. Oh, for takeoff. Shouldn't so, make a difference. I don't know. Do you know the maximum side wind component for the plane? Uh, didn't say in the specification. I think we're gonna be fine. It's not that much wind. No, six knots is good. Usually with the small plane, uh, the plane I fly, it's 15 knots. Okay. It's 90 degrees side wind component. So yeah, we won't go with that. I think it's, it's probably 20 knots with this plane. You 
can fly. Yeah, and once we're out there, we, we're gonna turn a north direction, north, north, east, uh, sorry, north, northwest direction anyway. And then we have the wind in our bag, which should speed us up a little bit. Okay, so now I'm joining. Just restarted the whole thing. Okay. Keep in mind parking two, and the time right now is 3.17 or 15.17 local time. It's a weird airport because it's basically right next to the town. And I assume that's that's how they get their most of their shipments in. You know, like I actually Googled a little bit about Stephenville Airport. <clears throat> There's a lot of military shows up there where big airplanes come in and I think people from the area just, you know, stop by and look at the giant transport aircrafts and stuff. It's pretty interesting airport up there. <clears throat> quite small and they did retire um, they did retire their secondary runway uh, a couple years ago which was a north south runway and we can see that here yeah, in the back the ignition I think hmm? yeah uh, uh, click uh, okay. sh shift, shift five shift five and go cold and dark Dark. Okay. And then what sim, right? What sim? And you should appear next to me in a second. Yeah, it was quite frustrating for me when you fly. I was flying the flight already up there to Goose Bay. I got really excited because it's Goose Bay Airport is a bigger airport, right? It has two major runways and it's it's an international airport and all that stuff. So it was my first big airport on that trip. And 10 minutes before, it's just like, Wah. oh, there we go. I see an airplane. Oh, we have connection there, I guess, huh? Mm -hmm. no. I see you on my right. Obviously, it doesn't model everything perfectly, but that's not the point. Um, we're good. Yep, I see you standing over there. Nice. Let me know when you're ready, and then we can do the startup together. All right. I'm it should ready. be raining on your it should be raining on your end too by the way uh, yeah. all right um i'm gonna go through uh, the startup or the the pre-startup checklist uh ci buses on which are left and right on the side of the pilot those two switches on the left side where yeah where you see the the communication device you know the Now. They're called uh, left engine generator bus tie and on right engine generator bus tie, both on. Uh, then we want to make uh, sure that in the middle, uh, let me just go in here, that uh, the fuel levels in between the seats, yes, uh, left and right are at the top. Yes, and the middle one is down. This down, that's how it should be, correct? Yeah. All right, um, then we're going to switch uh, battery master on. That's in the overhead yep. and starts on. beeping. Yeah, ignition gonna... off. Yep. Um, I'm going to switch on the lights real quick. Wing light, um, landing light we don't need yet. Taxi we don't need either. I put beacon on and position lights for right now. Beacon we don't need anything. Right before engine start. Now it's actually just the position light for now. Okay. Then I switch beacon off for right now. Okay. Uh, position light, and I put the uh, smoking sights on and the uh, seating sights, signs on. So they're both on. Um, Why is it beeping? Um, 
because you don't have any you are on your battery master you don't have any auxiliary power oh, right now so you can just just oh, mute okay. it make sure that you just switch your now you can click on the master button then it's all correct and next to the master button on the left switch from nav to gps and when you switch to gps it should vanish uh you, you know what i mean yes. the navigation mode from nav to gps yes okay Please. you did perfect uh then we are ready for the engine startup um let's do fuel pumps left and right to one mm -hmm. uh then we put uh the ignition on yes. and i'll start with start uh switch started sorry starter for engine number one on you hear the startup sound yes and then when it gets really high you put the condition lever on on all right and the engine should start up yep it's already on and make sure that uh your parking brake is on all right uh same thing with number two now i put the uh, starter on for number two I'm waiting a little bit. You bumped number two on, now, right? Mm-hmm. And the condition on. And engine number two is starting. I'm gonna wait till the RPMs and the the torque is going down a little bit, but we're good. I switch the starters to generators from starter and I'll switch the ignition off let me know when you're at that point fuel pumps, off. fuel pumps can go off yeah and uh, the starter is set to generator so we're actually generating some power here yep. um, avionics master on yes uh, in my case the route is already in there you're not. I go on flight plan, right? Correct, and then no, I just go direct to, and then what's the I go direct. Yankee? Charlie Yankee Yankee Romeo, and no, I said. First. Oh, okay. I go Charlie Yankee. Oh, the first one is Charlie Yankee Juliet Tango, and the um, that's Stephenville and Goose Base Charlie Yankee Yankee Romeo. And I'm gonna set my oh the one thing that we should probably do too is uh, lights on, panel lights. See that's what always happens. That happens to me too. It's that. It's the weirdest thing. There we go. That is good. Q and H should be set to nine nine eight or nine nine seven. Okay. Nine nine seven. Um Okay. Um with that we should be fine. Um, your Garmin is programmed. My beacon is on. Beacon is on. on. Taxi light I put on on recognition. I'll put the. Uh, 
I'll put the in the overhead. I put the uh, the left window shield low. I put the heat on. on Python heats we don't need yet, but we will. I've turned it on now. Pythons are on. Okay, surface the ice. We don't need yet, right? Surface the no. ice shouldn't shouldn't be necessary. And I leave and now the ice protection. We leave that off until we are at a thousand feet. But make sure you switch it on both of them. Okay. Yep. All right. So um, I'm ready to taxi. I'm gonna go first and select the altitude. Uh yeah, true. Initial altitude. Let's do six thousand. At the rate. Bread. Uh, 900. How can I select the rate? Oh, yeah. In the middle you click, then it switches to the rate. And then when you click yeah. again, it switches back to the feed. And the master autopilot is in your middle console, right underneath the condition levers. Yeah. Flight director and yawn. Yep. Damper. I have it. Okay. So with yawn that... Damper we turn on right now already. It should be on. Okay, it's on. And I will go in reverse. I need to do reverse thrust, even though it's not allowed anymore since 19, what, 70. I'm gonna go backwards because I have a fuel pump in front of me. It's not allowed anymore? No, since 1970, you're technically not allowed to push back with... Um, With reverse thrust. Because back in the, the big airliners, that's how they push back. Alright, I'm gonna go back. You can actually just drive out. No problem. Runway. Alright, so you just follow me in a second, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go... I just Where did you go? I okay. Just I had my call sign is too long, so. All right, I'm just gonna turn around and wait till you're back, okay? Well, I I probably have to send a new flight plan. Um, prime one connect uh, flight plan. Tell me real quick, um, the C, I can do it in the. Destination airport. Charlie, Yankee, Yankee, home here, right? Mm hmm. Alright, temperature time is in. How do I do it in Project Flight that I send it over to Vatsim? I forgot to send mine. Export, but you can do it in the um, V Pilot right now. Okay. What do I do? In V Pilot? Yeah, fly pad, fly plan. plan. Mm hmm. If uh, Charlie, Yankee, Juliet Tango. Charlie, Charlie Yankee. Yankee Romeo. Alternate, we would come back. We type in Charlie Yankee Tango. You truly Tango. Mm -hmm. 1913. Time on route 1 hour zero 01. Fuel available for zero 03 hours. And cruise speed, we have a true airspeed probably of about 200 knots. No, let's say 200 knots, yeah. Yeah, 200 knots, and they're cruising Cruise altitude, altitude 25. 25,000. A route and is Julie Yankee Juliet, sorry, Charlie Yankee Juliet Tango, and then is Charlie Yankee Yankee Romeo. Our remarks we don't need, right? We're good. No. And we don't send and receive, receive only. Yeah, we can send. Send and receive, okay. Uh, file flight plan, right? Yeah. But I have no flight plan. Now I should be online. Prime 1. Let me see. Yeah, I see you Prime already. No, I also have the map. Yep, Prime 1. All right, so I'm gonna go first, and you just follow me because I already know how to yep. get there. Okay. So her power, I mean, this is not really real because I don't know how to get what? out. Usually, when you get press on here, you, you should see the map. 
I can't go back on the map. Now I'm back on the map. Perfect. You see me driving in front of you? So you take care of everything, right? Yeah, I'm gonna bring you over if you just follow me. Let me make sure that you're not... Left engine oil temperature. Is it... Yeah, then you gotta open the cooler. So if you go in the overhead panel on three, or yeah, wherever yeah. you're set, uh, well, close, you have to do to open both of them if they're getting too hot. And usually you shouldn't do it in those conditions during takeoff. Yeah, during takeoff you have to close it again. It's just during taxi. Let me know when you're driving. Are I you, see you. Uh, Tutorials. Yeah. You seem to be really um, familiar with this. Well, I, I was flying quite a lot with that plane and I ran through a lot of scenarios with and it. How yeah. can I reset my attitude indicator? Oh, okay, so uh, do a parking brake real quick so we don't drive into each other. On your okay. side panel, uh, on the side of the pilot, on the left okay. side, if you look down where it says push on the handle, there's a, a, a little button there called <laughs> gyro power gyro power and you need to switch it to right uh to one let me tell me again where it is so on the left side where your left hand would be as a pilot uh mm -hmm. there's a the handle where you put your hand on and right next yeah. to it there's a couple of uh, there's a switch and it says gyro power right one or two and you switch it to one and My then your left hand yeah, if you go down, if you look down where your hand would be, right, your hand raised. Yeah, it's good now. And I have to put it on one? Zero, one, yeah. And then your PFD should come on. Yep. Now I still have oil temperature again. That's fine. And Herb, did you see that there is an um, ancient DIS left or right? Where? Oh, uh, down there, yeah. Yeah. So FST eyes. I just all right. Let's go. All right. So let me continue texting, and you can just follow me, right? And you know where the eyes protection switches are, right? They're on the overhead panel. But what was that on the left? I think that's oh, just that was... no. That tells me now you have green lights, left engine the eyes, or maybe just just tells me that there is no eyes. Yeah, I think that's I have... that's for checking it. Yeah. So there's two ways to get down um, the the actual runway, right? That's not, definitely not VFR. You know, you're not allowed to go through. That's actually IFR. It's fine. It's fine. So there's two ways to get down to. We we are, we are flying out of two seven, and there's two ways to go down. Either you go on the old track and then backtrack the runway, or you go down like a a gravel a gravel taxiway. So it's our choice. If you want to go, I think we should just because we're two airplanes, we should go down the gravel runway uh, taxiway. What do you think about um, flying the beginning? So we can see the, the earth until the clouds getting high up because I don't know if you, you want to go through those clouds. Yeah, we'll see what we what we do. We'll figure it out. Just keep in mind you want to put the ice protection on after start because <laughs> you don't want to don't want to fall out of the sky. Yeah, and then I want to see where I fly. This is this is not. Definitely not the VFR condition. Nope. So technically speaking, we would have to take a right here because the, and we have to backtrack on the actual runway, which is fine. So did you find out what the fight max display is next to our GPS? Yeah, that's another navigation system, I think. Do, do, do you use it or is it just... 
to no, you can you you can use it. I just haven't figured out how to how to use it. I turn it off now. All right, so I'm gonna backtrack, and we can both backtrack, and then just the line at the end of the runway. I'm gonna speed so up a little bit. Flaps one setting for takeoff. Yeah, I'm gonna go flaps fifteen. They call it. Which is the first, first, first setting, yeah. And we are crossing ru the old runway in a second. Then we get the hell out of here. It's not the best weather, you're right. It's the first time I actually have conditions like that. That's not the best. I would never fly a better like this in real life. Especially not a VFR. I mean, crazy. We're, we're gonna be fine. <laughs> Sucks to it. That, that, <laughs> well, it's not real, so we're definitely gonna be fine. <laughs> it's different if I have to fly in real life. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go to the left and I'm gonna let you pass and I'm gonna take off. No, actually, I'm gonna let you take off first. Okay. I wanna see this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty long, it's almost a 4,000 feet long runway so you should have no issues um all right so i'm gonna go to the left here i hear you in the back by the way i already overtook you yeah i don't mind it's fine yeah i see you so i'm gonna go to the left i'm gonna can i line there so I'm not in front of you? Yeah, you, you are, yeah. I actually want to make sure I don't crash in you. You can look left here, right? Yeah, you can actually align on the runway and I'm gonna go out the taxiway and, and I'm just gonna... Just hold on right, for you to go. Uh, Premier, Premier one, one is lining, lining up on runway 27. Uh, take a so Premier, Premier 1 is taking off runway 27 and initially climb uh, 3000. Alright, so oil pumps off? Uh, all cooling off, not oil pumps. Uh, well, cooling closed doors. Um, IS protection not on. Ooh, I'm really not. don't know if I should, can turn it off. Can turn it on. Yeah, turn it on for right now, it's fine. We're gonna be fine. Ice protection is on. And is there a surface on the ice is on? Okay. Um, I will wonder how you fly with no IMC. How you can fly. Alright, see you there. So, what's the rotation speed? Uh, 90. Hector Lima 6982 uh, aligning on uh, runway 27, ready for takeoff. It's not nice, Herb. 
those conditions. It's gonna be fine. And rotate. Tapping the brakes. Gear up. Are you taking a right turn or? Yes, I'm taking a right turn. You are sinking on my screen? Yeah, I don't know how the altitude selector doesn't. Oh, you gotta arm it, you gotta arm it. There's next to the altitude selector, there's an arm button, a white arm button. Okay. I pressed it, yeah. There's a difference between altitude hold and altitude arm. Uh, I'm putting in altitude hold and. Uh, nav hold. So I have nav hold, your damper, autopilot, and. Alt arm. But it doesn't show above my attitude indicator. Does it have to show? It just yeah, shows. Yeah, it has nav to show. Hold. Yeah, we have to click arm at the arm button again next to the altitude. The wh It's a white button. Yeah, but it doesn't show up then. What's the altitude then? Is your autopilot on? Autopilot? Look, in the first row it says your damper, autopilot, and enough. Oh, is the flight director on? No. Yeah, click on where the button it? flight director right above where you switch on the uh, autopilot. Make sure that it says, uh, the first thing should say FLT DAR for flight director. Yeah, now it's flight director. And now put altitude arm on, now which it's is on, yeah. yeah. And it should it should climb now. So now that we are flying, we have uh, anti eyes on, so everything should be fine. Uh, make sure that your flaps are coming in. Flaps in, yeah. So now I have flight director, your dump, autopilot, alt arm, and nav CPLD. Correct. You're perfect. That that is perfect. Um, wow, it's really bumpy out here. Yep. Whoa. We're gonna be fine. <laughs> wow. Let's get let's go altitude ten thousand at a rate of uh, what? Uh, let's do one thousand rate. Let's also make sure that you take your prop RPMs both back to 85. Well, I did it to the first. There's l little um, knobs or little uh, pfeile. I did it to the first ones. How can I select 85? Uh, when you use your mouse wheel. If you hover over the, the propeller control, you can just with one mouse wheel roll, it does five at a time. So I always go to a hundred and then I go back three, yeah. On both of them, on, on both blue ones, the left and the red one. Well, I have a little um, dot, so you can see that, you know, which says diesel decrease and then propeller. There's either, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, I see that, yeah. There's little pointers. So I, I always go to 85. I think that, that puts the proper BM right there where wow. they should be. Those are VMC conditions. Yep. Now I can't see. I can't see anything. Yeah. What is your climb rate right now? We're going to ten thousand. Keep that in mind. One thousand. Okay. I'm at three thousand five hundred. I don't know if I'm clear of anything here. No, we we have to go higher than. But we'll go up. It's gonna be fine. It is bad weather. It is really bad weather. I agree. But we're just now leaving the mainland, so we'll get there.
it is nice that you join me on this flight. Yeah. It's a nice flight. I mean, I don't know how your weather looks, but I can't see anything. Yeah, it's, yeah I'm in the clouds. It's raining and I see nothing. I, see, I only see the red indicator that you're in front of me. What's your airspeed, by the way? My airspeed is 200 indicated. Okay, same here. Until we are 10,000, we can we can go on max and then we can slow down a little bit. Once we're out it's of that weather. Not, yeah. Actually, I'm going back with the power a little bit. Okay. Let's go to the uh, 170 indicated. Because I think that's, that's actually... the, sec the secure airspeed. Exactly. But actually, f during climb, you should actually not. Diesel. You should actually climb quicker, you know. Mm -hmm. Seems like we are reaching cloud layer. I go up at, say, a 2000 rate, you know? Mm -hmm. That high? No, usually you. with. I got 1500. Crops, well, it's a prop, you know what I mean? Usually, if you don't have uh, auto thrust, you don't with climb. You don't take rates. You usually take speeds. You gotcha. Say, for example, with my plane, I fly. We have a climb speed of 75, and what comes out, the climb rate comes out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you know what you will, I know what you will. You know. Did you watch the business with the last last time? <laughs> the last show, I didn't didn't watch, but it w I was laughing. Uh, you know what the funniest thing was when he said when they asked him, Mr. Niesel, are you are you a houseman? Do you work a lot at home? No, you know I do, I do sometimes. You know, uh, Jolene, is he doing housework? No, he's just watching TV and eating at the refrigerator. <laughs> I cook. <laughs> I still cook. You know the cooking is my thing. That's what I do. But you know the the Drakeway Kraman, she does. <laughs> Uh, take a climb rate of 2,000. I put it on 1,600. I'm a slightly higher than you are right now. Um, I'm at 1,700. Okay, I, uh, now we're almost at the same altitude. I go on 2,000. Okay. Um, so I, I think we're almost poking message. through. I just got a private message from the controller. Mm -hmm. To uh, keep this flight as VFR, we have to stay un beneath two, uh, one flight level of 12,000. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, let's hope that we, we, we can stay out of the clouds at 12,000. I'm out of the clouds already. Oh, you are? Okay. Yes. So we stay 12,500, okay? Because okay, we let's go 12,500. You want to go 12,500? 12, yeah, it's the, it's the highest we are allowed. And you want to go 12,500? What's that? Do you want to go to 12,500? Sure. Okay. Altitude set. I just text him. I'm still not out of the clouds though, on my end. Let's hope I get out of it. So he said we can switch to IFR if we want. If you want to go it higher, but you will need to remain below 12,500. No, I think we're good. So that's why I would recommend on Matsim fly IFR, then you get all the information. Because you would need a special VFR um, map, which shows you the limits for VFR. I am at uh, 11,300. So basically, with not out of rest points, not air passes, you can with a, with a speed. Gotcha. This rate you have, it depends on different things that this rate you will have. For example, I 
climb with a rate of 75 knots with the plane I fly and it could be my initial climb is actually 58 knots then I have 65 knots and then my cruise climb is 75 knots and it can be 300 I, I'm gonna stay around um, 170 knots indicated. Okay. Yep, I'm off the clouds too. That's beautiful actually. Amazing. <laughs> There's some bigger clouds in front of you, I don't know if you see that. Yeah, but a little further. All right, I'm at 12,500. Uh, I'm at 180 knots indicated. I'm gonna go a little bit back. I go back now with my thrust. You're about 5.3 nautical miles in front of me, so it's a nice... And I go back with the prop another. Do you know, I heard, but I don't know if you have ever spent time, um, I can send you a, an a paper how what it is about the prop setting and why you have to do it yeah I, I watched a long video about it I'm not a obviously not a specialist on it but I no, it, it's not a big topic it took me in flight school one day two days to figure it out what it means but if it's, it's it, it there's two types of prop there is a so-called Verstellpropeller it's a it's a prop you can adjustable prop yeah adjustable prop and then not adjustable mm -hmm. the good thing about the adjustable you can have the, be the best benefit out of it in low speeds and high speeds because the problem is with a prop it can either be good in high speed or in low speed with a not adjustable one like for example working planes they don't have to fly in high speed, but they want, for example, to accelerate really, really quick and uh, have high load of, of, of mass of cargo mm -hmm. to get accelerated quick. Then you have the angle of the of the blade. Um, yeah, of the blades, they are less. They have, uh, smaller angle you know mm -hmm. so more air gets sucked in but when the speed gets higher the effect isn't that good anymore because then um, you would need a bigger angle mm -hmm. and that's there's um, the with those you can select the angle yeah and for example when you the more you faster you get and you have the same angle as at the start you 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 don't have the doesn't help you anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, here yeah, yeah. you can. You, you lose. You basically lose thrust. You don't gain any more thrust there. You lose thrust, and actually, if you go back with your uh, prop now, you actually gain thrust because correct. It's more, yeah. It, it, yeah. And there's also you have to look in YouTube difference between um, fixed speed constant speed propellers the constant speed you don't actually tell them the angle anymore that like this one is a constant speed yeah you tell them the rpm and he knows which angle to have to have this rpm it's a little complicated you have to figure out it has a hydraulic system and tell and use a 850 AP. now what's my what's our rpm now? let's let's see our rpms Is now prop RPM is 2000 now. Okay, mm -hmm. 2000 prop RPM. I have 2000. Usually with my plane, I have 2200. That's the one I fly. And now, for example, er, let's try something. Yeah, prop RPM is around 2,200 on my end. Two, sorry, 2,100. Yeah. Yeah, go back on 2,000. Oh, okay, 2,100 is good, yeah? Yeah. I, I have 2,100 too. So this is, you can see if it's a constant speed propeller. 
if you go back with power a little bit and mm -hmm. it stays the same RPM. Uh, on the props, you mean? Prop RPM? Yeah. Let me check that. Yeah, it stays, yeah. Yeah, so it's I a see. constant speed. So now the power goes back, so we get we are slower, but the prop now changes his angle automatically. Oh. So it's a, so it a keeps, self adjusting. It's it it's adjusting, yeah. Nice. It's adjusting its angle right now, so this is actually can be a problem if you are focusing on the prop and you think, Oh, I have enough power but a constant speed, speed propeller, it's in its range. If you go under a certain speed, it can't keep the RPM anymore. Then it will go down. But it can uh, keep the RPMs for pretty much time. Uh, and now if you Make go, sure you set your Q and H to 2992. He just 2992? Oh, sorry, it's 2970. That's the prompt no, that is suggested. The Q and H that is suggested. He suggested? No, um, P3D suggested it. Because we're still flying yeah. at the Q and H of Stephenville. Might as okay. well set it to. I set it to 1005 or 297. Anyway, he just told me to contact. Uh, on what frequency? Do you know the frequency? No, hold on a second. So if you have a fixed speed propeller, it will lower. So this is a constant speed, but it can cause problems when you think, oh my God, my, my prop is high, but actually the prop is just uh, um, changing, changing its, its angle. angle so it's yeah. Keeping high, but you have no thrust. Under two hundred. One three two decimal two zero zero. What's the one airport three. code? One three two decimal two zero zero. This is uh, CCQM Center. I don't know what that is. Doesn't that just rate a good day? What so? What's the freak, what's the airport we're going to? Uh, Goose Bay Airport. Radar, good afternoon. Uh, it's Premium One, uh, attaining 12,500 um, and direct Goose Bay. Uh, Premier One, uh, Gay Monkton Center, good afternoon, sir. Uh, yeah, you don't really need to contact me uh, for VFR until you get close to uh, VFR for your for your landing clearance. Uh, if you want, I can give you some uh, flight following at this time if you like. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be nice. nice. Just, Just some traffic, traffic information. information. Um, Premier One, thank you. Hey, Premier One, uh, get you to Squawk 3122 for me, please. I'm just gonna stay in tandem with you. We don't need two. It makes no sense to have both of them. We're probably, uh, 3122, Premier One. Hey, Premier One, uh, have you rate identified at 12,200 feet? Uh, you are probably about 115 miles to the west of the St. Anthony VOR. You just maintain VFR at all times. Uh, just have traffic to your uh, 6 o'clock. Um, no contact with me. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah that's my, my confidence. Uh, thank you. Come on. Come on. 
Do you want Uno zero zero six? Uh, I have probably some altimeter information for you, in Bonaventure. Uh, Looks like the altimeter might be two nine or six three. Pilot discretion. You can descend down to uh, one two thousand. Jazz eighty eight twenty four is level at uh, two zero zero. Jazz eighty two four, thank you, sir. Get you to contact Moncton Center now. One two four four. Twenty four four. Talk to you later. Good job. I actually don't see you anymore, Christopher, in front of me. Are you still here? Maybe I'm. Uh, I'm already further. Yeah, you must be too quick for me. You can contact him, but you don't when you say pre when you pre when you say premier one, I don't understand why do you say premier one and not your call sign. That's my call sign. Oh. So usually now with plane, you know, with the RPM and with the torque. You, you're actually supposed to look in your flight book of the manufacturer and you say I want to fly low fuel flow then it tells you exactly this RPM at this altitude with this um, uh, fuel flow for example gotcha. you know what I mean? Yep. so we are now flying just like we want actually well we actually now I'm flying exactly 200 what's your speed? I'm a little bit below. I'm at 170, so I'm gonna speed up a little bit because you're yeah. you're too fast now, right now for me. Yeah, I'm I'm going back, okay, to uh, 160, and you raise your speed to 200. We have clear air, so basically the the green, the whole green section, talking about the speed indicator. Mm -hmm. So 4275 is. With 75, your stall speed with full flap starts. The white begins. This means here you can fly with full. You see the white mark? Yeah. It means from the whole white from 75 till 150, 45, or 47, you can use your flaps. Yep. Okay. Never. And out of that, you, you don't out. use them anymore, yeah? Yeah, then they you destroy them. Then you have your white. Under this speed, you will stall. Um, the red do the red line is the line where you will stall with one engine. You can stall with one engine lost. So with one engine lost, you have to be above the red line. You see that? And actually, um, the red. KLM 6467, Means to never exceed speed, so never go further than the red. But you can actually stay, looks like you can stay in the whole green area. In clear air. Which means, like now, it's clear air, you're in cruise, you can stay. KLM 646, ready to identify, flight level 330. In that range. You have turbulences. You stay under your maneuver speed. That's the most. Actually, it should it should be written somewhere. It's the most important speed. Most planes, it's somewhere written the maneuver speed. That's the speed. Yeah, it is one seven heavy, seven seven. Heavy turbulence, and that's you know why it's it, it's a speed where their manufacturer promise you a plane can't get destroyed because it even in the highest turbulences you can imagine it will stall. Like you have a high turbulence, it will not take the power on its surface. It will just stall and fall. So this speed won't make any damage to the construction. The green speed just says in clean air, um, you will have no problems. But it's, you know, it's a little bit doesn't tell you what's clean air, you know, and you never know. So here is a big difference, obviously, between the maneuver speed and the clean air speed, you know, or the 
Feeder one Green's three. Speed. With my airplane, for example, one, it's two, one and four is my maneuver speed. I usually three, stay the no one four, but I can just if I go full speed, one eight nine red death I can up three, six, just zero, go zero, one five, fifteen. Four. So it doesn't make much difference. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I always stay secure and be under 104. But doesn't mean you can go a higher ground speed. For example, today I went indicated 100 and I had a lot of backwind, so I went 140, not uh, ground speed, you know? Mm -hmm. That that doesn't matter, you know? The wind, you can go, a, for example, a thousand miles with, doesn't affect the plane, it's just the indicated. That's the air around you yeah yeah i still don't see in front of me that's interesting are you at 12,000 or 12,500 12,000 i'm much faster yeah i'm around 190 right now i have a ground speed of 260 really you have a ground speed of 200 I have a ground speed of 245 right now. And now I have a ground speed of two. What's your indicated speed? My indicated speed right now is 195. Okay, my indicated speed is 170. And I have a ground speed of 235. Which means I have a backwind of 65. Or actually 60. Did my Garmin just so, switch off? No. That's why okay. I would recommend you to get the... Oh, it's raining. Look. Actually, we can turn the ice protection off. Oh, not now. I'm going for a cloud. <laughs> yeah, not okay. in the clouds, yeah. Oh, look, there's a Lufthansa flight. Good day, flight level 380 back on your frequency. Oh, that's Lufthansa. Where is this guy? Oh, up here. And Blue Nose uh, 6 uh, descending past uh, 1 2000. Uh, you will be leaving controlled airspace. Uh, for radar to service terminated. Uh, you can monitor 122.8 for a approach into uh, Bonaventure. To Chicago. No, Toronto. Lufthansa to Toronto is right above us. Uh, or in the area of us. It's the closest plane. So, oh, I'm in the cloud now, which is not VFR. So, that's why I would recommend, I am slower now, I have a ground speed of 240. And you? Uh, ground speed is 247 right now. Okay. And the indicator? Indicated uh, 196. No. Okay. So, obviously we don't have the same better engine. That's what... Why I could I would really recommend next time they have fifty percent off you you get the active sky, you know. Mm hmm I mean if you fly by yourself it doesn't matter. But uh, they say active sky have the most accurate weather. Oh, just opened the window. Ooh. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Oh, you can do it. It's, we I are mean, at 12,000. I open the window when I'm at 12,000. So we're almost over, over land again. Are you already over solid ground? Okay, I'll take someone. Not yet. You can see it though. Yeah, I like this airplane. It's a, it's different. You know what I mean? It has a little bit more. I would recommend flying it with uh, IFR though in the, in the future. If we are on Watson, because.
because we could go higher up if we fly IFR. Yeah, normally when I fly by myself, I normally fly it higher anyway, and I don't fly it with Vatsim, so... Yeah. Well, I'm oh, there we go. I see you again. You are 10 miles yeah. ahead of me, finally. <laughs> I caught I'm up with you a little speed. bit. I'm now down... Oh. Down to 160 ground speed, are you kidding me? So, I'm wrong. In Austria or in Europe, VFR, quark code is 700. Uh, 7000. Yeah. And in the US it's 2000. So you are supposed to put in 2000 actually. And then transponder to which? Altitude. Always altitude. Standby okay. if you're taxiing. And off if off and altitude. If, so you send him your altitude. Yeah, I put my squawk to 2000 now. And altitude. That's just for VFR, yeah. IFR always have either yeah, on one squad code or they get that squawker. Yeah. Now with the char mode Charlie transponders with the new ones, that's not a mode Charlie. They don't send, um, they actually send uh, um, their exact ID. So there's your call sign sent with the transponder so you don't need so in Austria every VFR flight usually has 7000 because transponder transmits now the call uh, not the call sign the registration of the plane so he can identify you know mm -hmm. by So it's going to be interesting where we're going to land in, if it's, um, what landing should, do you want to look at the, the map of the airport? Because there's two runways. Three, the wind is three, four, zero degrees, one, three knots. So I would actually... Um, recommend. Yeah, there is a runway three four right. There's a runway uh, zero eight, and there's a runway uh, three four. Yeah, I mean, so that's perfect. The wind comes out of three four zero, as you see in Aeroveta, mm -hmm. with with thirteen knots. So we can land in a uh, runway three four. So basically, for landing, because you asked me, you know, how long, and I talked to Steven about it. Yeah. I have had a little problem, my speed dropped. Under the red line. Yeah, you lost a little bit of altitude too. So yeah, we're gonna go to Goose Bay Airport. So Usually, you say, when you are 30,000 30, miles up, for example, you start with the descent 90, 90 miles before the airport. Exactly, yep. When you are 40,000 miles up, you descend that 120. And now, as we have backwind, we have to add, let's say, 20%, he said. They add it, you know, 
because you take it takes longer because you're faster mm -hmm. because of your fa ground speed is higher because you have back tailwind you know mm -hmm. so we are now up 12,000 10,000 feet you know let's say 10 let's say we have 15,000 up here okay yep so we need 45 miles before the airport we need to the start the start descent, the yep. descent. Mm -hmm. and in the airbus it's cool you can have a fixed you can give a fixed info which is when you say fix info for your destination airport and then you have have uh, type in um, 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 more than 50 miles then you get a big circle and you get the information that now you in that circle you know you got it or no yeah no i do actually okay, so when i was when i was flying when i was flying the last time i was at 25000 and i started descending at uh, 90 miles out i went to 3000 feet and then on the sh on the base leg i turned down to what was it 2500 and then my my simulator crashed but yeah that was my process usually base leg you should always be actually you say the traffic pattern which is the platzrunde in german traffic pattern it's usually always a thousand um, a thousand uh, okay. feet above above the, the level of the the level of the airport msl okay no no msl uh, sorry like, airport altitude yep like when the when it's on 1500 you fly 2500 the downwind and end. then you seven tango go with the then you have to manage yourself like I did it today. Seven, 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 right. Tango Golf, yeah. Good afternoon. Squawk three one two. I flew, as you know, Vienna three, one, two, four, three, one, is on six hundred, and I mean the VFR sector. You have to be. He said um, you are allowed to enter VFR sector south um, for crossing runway two nine. And then in one thousand five hundred. Fever seven Tango Golf, rate identified by really three zero no. five one. So I was actually 900 above ground, which is 300 meters. And then he cleared me for the low approach, but I was a little bit lower than actually the altitude you should be. Okay. Because he told me to be at, at 1,500. But usually you always fly your traffic pattern 1,000 um, feet above the runway height. Gotcha. Altitude. So, if you're on the base leg or on the downwind leg, a thousand above the altitude of the... Here it's always mean sea level, or actually the sea level, right? Yeah, most of the time, yeah. MSL. But look, temperature is 9 and the two point is minus 3, so it's just a 40% uh, of the humidity. Which is not a big problem. I are you mean, looking now at the airport in Goose Bay, or are you looking right now? Goose Bay, yeah. Yeah, Goose Bay I has mean, minus three, two point and nine degrees. Yep. And altimeter nine 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 nine. Broken clouds at 5,500 feet, overcast clouds at 12,000 feet. So we actually, we're right, we're gonna be right at the the overcast clouds. When we I actually in. said the 9999. Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. I'm gonna say it's a 9999. So basically, if you in real life, he should actually tell me, tell, us, tell you the the area if you're still flying on QNH you, you get the area QNH mm -hmm. and then he would say QNH revise you, like I did had today it was QN, I flew today it was when I started when I took off it was QNH 1007 and then he told me Oscar Echo Charlie Oscar Golf QNH revise it's now 1008 yeah I'm on 0999 which is 2952 I go on 1000 actually because it's 999, 9.7. So, all right. So, one coin H is 30 feet different. Mm -hmm. So, 
that makes a lot of difference. I mean, if you have a visual approach, then in the end you're gonna look at the runway anyway, right? No, for now it's important for traffic, you know. Sure. It says um, traffic is on this altitude, and he, yeah, but if he doesn't uh, know if yeah, but he doesn't know um, the Q and H of us, right? Of course he knows, yeah. He doesn't know which we set, but he knows the QNH here and he knows if we don't have the same QNH, we fly a different altitude. We see 12,500, but we in a different one. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Sees, he doesn't see our altitude, that's why he says, please. He sees the relative, yeah, the relative altitude. Yeah, and then he has, to, so those altitudes we have to have the same. Yeah, I'm at 1,000 now, yeah, then we're good. That's why he said usually when you do your initial call, he says, all right, identify it, and on a VFR flight, and he said, please report your altitude, and then you tell him the altitude. Then he knows that it's the accurate, you have the accurate. Gotcha. Um, so where, are you far behind? I am 5.7 nautical miles behind you. Can you... We could actually give him... Beat up. I, I am on 240... I'm on 250 now. 250 ground speed. Okay. Yeah, same here. 246. 244. I think this is good because 5 miles for the approach. Because we're going to land in the next half hour. So... I think it's going to be fine. Because it gives us enough time to separate us out. Ah. Well, with VFR, you know, with the small planes, we have a separation of not much. And our Chitokura. Summer, when there's five planes in the in the traffic pattern, we have a little separation. <laughs> I mean, we're flying in an international airport, so... Uh, wow. It's bumpy out here. Here. I just... noticed there's some bumps. Do you think that... has this, um... Chitokura is kind and that's another fluke of one of us? No, it's a regional airport. <laughs> <laughs> but it's international. You can... We have... Um, International normally is a place where they do um, customs and immigration. Yeah, and we can. We have we have one of the least little airfields. We are smallest, airfield, yeah. Anyway, and we have one of the no. We have one of one of the airfields in Austria, or one of the airfields who have customs. For example, one of the few airfields that have customs, you mean, yeah? Because usually when, for example, Steven, he flies back to Zeltberg from Croatia, he has to land in Graz, does his custom there, and then he's, he can go and fly to Zeltberg. But here we have a certain, we have a special agreement with police and customs. If you call them and you say, ah, oh, I'm, tomorrow I'm coming back from Croatia, at one o'clock, mm -hmm. they come here. They usually they don't come. They just ah oh, okay we know and they say it could be that they check, but in ninety percent they trust and they don't. They know we don't. They, I see what you're saying. Don't come check. So, the Grasa, you know, the, from Grasa Racing, you don't, you know the guy uh, We got a message, Red. it says, oh no, it was UPS, I see what, Squawk 2000 position request on 122.8, have a good flight, okay. Alright, we're slowly creeping our way towards you know Goose Bay. Grasa from Magreten from Grasa Racing. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard of him? Yeah. And he does flying and he bought himself um, 
E because he is actually pretty successful with the Lamborghini racing trim in the street series, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he has he bought the 1970 year from 19, from the 1970s a Cessna 340. You Google it up on your. It's a two engine, and he has not the turboprop version. He has the. Um, the how you say? Normal oh, engine. I see it. Yeah. And Steven, Steven, our friend, he's going to pick it up because it's in Slovenia parked right now because he got stuck. And Steven sometimes flies for him with it. You know that Cessna? Did you see that Cessna 340? Yeah, I have it up right now on my stream as well. Yep, yeah. I see it. Yeah. That's it. 338 to private, yeah. That's the one, yeah. And he has not the turboprop, he has the version with with um, normal engine. How you say it in English? A uh, propeller. You mean just a piston engine? Piston, right. It's very and similar to to the the one we are flying, actually. Yeah, like from a type. I told you. Yeah. And he flies in Zeltweg with it, and he, he parks it in Klagenfurt, and he flies to all the races in Europe with it. That's pretty cool. And with his and with his team, um, with his big um, with one of part with the managers. So he flew to London to the race in Britain. He flew himself from Zeltweg and he wants to buy a CG2 jet now because he, it's a little bit too slow for him he said an old CG2 jet he can get for under a million and he can transport eight of his staff to the races and he's more flexible does he make that much and money I, with racing yeah he's totally he's one of the, he won uh, all the he won the series last year with the Lamborghini Google it up, um, Grasa Racing. He's really successful yeah, with this Lamborghini. So he, he in this racing series, Lamborghini never was um, for vertreten. It's uh, got ADC, you never took part ADA, of that. ADAC, the ADAC, GT Masters. And he came up with Lamborghini and he tuned it. Of course, they tuned it, those cars. Mm -hmm. And he got so successful that he is now official in Knittelfeld. He tunes for, if you say I want a, G a Lamborghini GT Masters version, he tunes those special versions, which are sold for almost a million mm -hmm. to special customers. And he makes about 30 to 50 special editions himself now in Knittelfeld. Mm -hmm and has a special contract it was all over the news that he, he because it's so successful and and all the racing freaks they want now the rich racing freaks you know said, i want a gt master uh, 80s i want the cross racing Lamborghini. and he's he's a cool guy he's not um not to show up uh, show off and likes flying and he has his Cessna 340 yeah now wants to buy a CG2 jet. He said this. Stephen told me it would save a lot of money flying with, with the jet because he has to be every other weekend somewhere else in Europe, you know. Mm -hmm. and of course, it's expensive, but he likes to fly, you know. And I often see him with his 340 about driver stuff, about driving stuff coming in. I never flew it, Steven flew it and um, because he has the multi-engine piston, I just have a single-engine piston license, you know, I'm not allowed to fly the piston. But it's a nice plane, yeah. 40. Oh, the clouds are there. I finally see some ground in front of me. Just 
sun is going down too. And we are 106 or I am at least 106 nautical miles away and you should be 100 nautical miles away. If I'm not mistaken. And this will hopefully be a successful leg three, finally. Grasser Racing, did you Google it? Is yeah. It you said? Grasser Racing, I mean, did you Google it? Yes, I did. It's a nice car, yeah? Lamborghini. I was never a big Lamborghini fan, oddly enough. Never really liked the, the way they looked. Particularly well. In a 2009 of Sebi Ring, Rolex 24 Bina in Daytona of 2019 and 2018. GT World Champion, uh, winner overall champion 2017. Endurance Champion 2017. ADC Vice Champion 2019. Yeah, he's doing a good job with his car. You know, and he's um, one of his thing is, you know, he has no fixed drivers. Mm -hmm. Tells the permission to drivers pay more. Not just that. I think it's it's a weird concept. Like good drivers, they can. He thinks yeah, they could drive my car good. He would um, hire, and they would have to pay to five. And for them, it's um, to make advertisement for the big teams. You know. Yeah in different series like I think I'm a good driver I pay him like 30,000 and I make for him three races and for me it's an advertisement for other um, something like this I'm not really familiar that's just maybe I'm talking bullshit but that's one of his concepts yeah. but that's probably what Steven is gonna do because at the beginning before he started that louder motion he, the guy said he will buy a CG2, you know the CG2? Yeah. The most, most... It's Bombardier, sold. Eh? No, Cessna, CG2. It's the most sold private jet in the world. Cessna, Citation jet. Ah, uh, Citation, jet. yeah, yeah, yeah. So CG, uh, uh, CG1, he, he will want to buy a... The most sold um, private jet, yeah, jet. Yep. CG1. And Steven was supposed to become his pilot because he, you know, not like real, like full time, but if he says, yeah, next weekend you bring me to the race, you know, you fly with me because seeing a pilot with a jet with six people on board or eight people on board is a lot of work, you know, and responsibility. Sure. I mean, I wouldn't do this you know fly with my staff with eight people on board and then London. work there too right then they have then all the work. stress you have stress you know and then fly back and you have to be there you know it's not like okay the weather is not so good we can turn back no we have to land All right. So this is maybe a, a for Steven. Wow, shitty weather here. I'm in clouds. I don't see anything. Say we would uh, we go down. Already. 
We're still around, what? 80 miles away? 85 miles? I mean, we can. Soft descent. 500 feet. To what altitude? Oh, 7,500 for the beginning. Alright. Soft descent at 500 to 750. Zero. Let's make sure we don't overspeed the aircraft. Let's go back a little bit with thrust. I wonder if we have a tower there, but I don't think so, when we land in. No, not online. That's fine. So we're just gonna choose, we said 3-4, right? Uh, so that's a south, uh, southeast approach, which means the base leg should probably be... We should probably take a right right before we actually land in. No, you're not much. We don't have a base leg. We're actually going direct. It's actually a direct. Yeah, I just follow your lead because you've obviously more experience than we I do. Our, we are almost on this on the heading we want. I mean, the course. What's what's the course? Our course is. Yeah, we're almost zero, there. Zero. Yeah. Zero zero six. We're almost so straight in. Yeah. Left. Left turn. We're descending nicely. I give him an 800. 800? Okay. I'll be right back. So yeah, hopefully this will be a little bit more successful. I really, really pray to the to the gods that they will not crash P3D. That would be devastating. So let's make sure we get those planes into Goose Bay to finalize the third leg and finally be at the at the point where we can prepare for the Greenland flight. Uh, which would be again a solo flight so Christopher just uh, basically joined me for today's flight out of Stephenville my my stay there was a little bit longer than expected so let's make sure this all goes well Let's make sure we see the map here. Real quick, so we are just about to enter the area where we head over here to Goose Bay, which is quite a neat spot. I looked up a couple of things about this area. Um, Crazy, are you back? I'm back, yeah. yeah. I'm just. I'm, I'm um, always, I'm always, I'm always wondering, like when you fly to those virtual places, you know, like how it would be if you could actually fly there, like randomly, and just, you know, check out random towns. You know what I mean? That you would have never yeah. even visited. So, the idea of Good. flying is is cool because <clears throat> it's way cheaper than you taking a car. Because if you have a truck or a SUV, you burn almost the same amount of. Or yeah. fuel price wise but you take way longer right i mean you spent like literally days getting there and in this plane you take a couple of hours or three hours and then all of a sudden you're uh, i think you make a couple of hours on um, p3t and then next year you start with your li private license in, sure. in the us it's not that expensive 
you know what I was thinking about today? I could um, next time I visit you, maybe next year, because this year is probably not that it's not possible. I I figure out uh, Brainerd um, to charter at Cessna, and we make trips like to Marfus Minyard with the Cessna 182. Yeah. I need to get more experienced anyway, but ne by next year I should be more experienced. I mean, you can never yeah, be the, experienced enough, but... the There's a lot of planes, you know, private planes obviously going out there. Almost every day I see the Chesnas and stuff flying towards right. the shoreline. It's half the price like in Europe, the, the general aviation. It's like everybody flies there. So that's definitely what I will do when I next time in your I will take a plane. You know we uh, we have uh, 400 members in our um, uh, in our airfield, uh -huh. and they do every year uh, a U.S. trip, and we have uh, not partner, let's say friendship um, airfields all around the world. Yeah. And the, the area actually the north 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 northeast uh, northeast is really popular for Europeans to go. So I feel like I'm out uh, uh, a serious. You know, I want to go to a serious. Not the not the not the talking about the airport. Just you know the the guys who. Rent no, I see the, what you're saying. Yeah. You know, if I get there's a lot of there's a lot of airports too all around. It's yeah, maybe not Brainerd, maybe some different one in around. You know, mm -hmm. and then the most you know the best is, is I need to I want to do my night VFR license this summer, mm -hmm. and then the best thing I think in the general aviation um, life can be if you fly night VFR. Um, the Hudson River and the East, you, then you make a Manhattan night VFR flight. This is probably the most exciting thing you can do. Yeah, you can. That's I it. think they even have something at at the casinos and stuff. I think there's a private uh, airport there where people can fly in. You know what I mean with helicopters and and airplanes, small aircraft. Because they fly up, you know, if s certain, you know, like celebrities that have a concert or whatever or something yeah. going on, they just fly in from New York with a private jet. So, All right, I'm sketched uh, 7,500 right now. Yeah, me too. Let's go down to... It's at the ocean, right? The airport. Uh, it's go. basically, yeah. Let's go 3,500. Um, uh, which uh, heading? I, actually, we have to uh, go too far. 2,000? Yep. 2,500. Always 500. With VFR, it's, you never go on even. Okay. And Always I go, go nine, 900 down. Oh, it's so bumpy. It reminds me of my flight today. It was so bumpy. In the summer times, it's getting more and more bumpy. I, I was used now to winter flying, and in winter, it's not bumpy, no, not turbulences. But so soon, it's getting summer, and the surface, the earth, is heating up. You have the the framework, and the, those is the thing who makes it bumpy and uncomfortable. But today it was really it was windy and. The, the thermic from summer from the heat wasn't good as good as I expected but then the low approach made it all good again yeah it is getting bumpy for me now too or bumpier uh, it was for me it was hard to to actually control today 
Yeah, and there's a big difference because you're actually flying a real plane. <laughs> yeah. You can't just say pause. Yeah, that's the problem. Really, sometimes I think, why can I not just pause now? It's really... It was... Uh, you know, you have the, the seat belt, always your shoulder seat belt. Mm -hmm. And that's when you, when you feel you need it, because otherwise you would get... With your head... <laughs> Moved up, yeah, yeah sure. You, you would hit your head up. And that's really this time when you think, oh... Simulate the flying is actually more comfortable. You're in your, you can, you're in your bed, <laughs> in your pajamas. And... Right, I'm reducing oh. my airspeed a little bit. I was over 200. Me too. Why am I so fast? Yeah, because we're, we're descending and we're not really slowing down the props. Ooh. So. The problem now with the corona is we are not allowed to fly with two persons on board. Every pilot has to fly by himself. Mm. For yeah, now. that makes sense. Um, which is actually, I think, a dangerous thing because... I mean, I am allowed to fly myself and I don't have to. I know I don't have to fly, but I would always prefer going with a, diff with a second one. Not even a pilot. Just in case, yeah. Just in case, you know, you feel you get unconscious or whatever. Just in case. But unfortunately not, so... I don't go flying tomorrow. It was enough today, it was enough action. And obviously the air right now isn't that... Smooth. Smooth. Yeah, because everything's heating up. When it, Once it's... The general temperature, the difference between ground and air is better. You know, when everything warms up, it stabilizes a little bit. Right. That's... we <clears throat> got it. Well, and It's just that be... time of the year, you know what I mean, where it's... All yeah. of a sudden it gets warm. It's the same here today, you can tell. Uh, every time it gets warm, the wind comes in too. It's just you can tell that the difference in temperatures is too much right now. And I'm increasing my airspeed slightly because I'm around 140, no 50. It's a little bit too slow for my taste. I'm gonna go back up to 160, and I'm at 4,000 indicated. Does he has a radar? No. He has no radar um, inside, right? Where he tells you the radar hey, altitude. No. Oh. So that's just for. Um, the radar thing is for precision approaches where you need the, the well not just actually for precision approach but it's actually a, a warning system the GPVS the ground proxy proximity warning system you know mm -hmm. it usually starts with 2500 yeah we are at I'm at 3400 right now no but the radar hate we are definitely not sea level so we are actually I don't know how, I can't tell how close it is to the... To the ground? To the ground? Well, I would say about 600, uh, 600, about 2,000 feet minimum. It's really hard to tell. That's I mean, why a radar, a radar is good when you have a radar in. Or when you have a map where it tells you the actual um, elevation of the, of the terrain. area around you, of the terrain. I mean, you can't get terrain in red. Alright, and I'm leveling off at... Uh, the weather is a little bit better up here for me. I don't know how it is for you. Yeah, definitely. Oh no, I mean it's raining and I see the sun on my left upper side, but it's really cloudy and raining. All right, I'm actually surpassing you almost. I gotta be careful. You're right in front of me right now. You lost a lot of airspeed, I guess. Ah, waited. I wanted you to catch up. Yeah, to, I'm to your 5 o'clock right now. 
But tells me, flight simulator tells me you are one mile, se se 0.7 miles behind. For me, it says 0.2. So I just slowed down a little bit because I want you to be ahead because we are like, what, 16 miles away? No, 30 oh, miles three. away. Yeah. Okay, let's stay at this altitude and I accelerate. Perfect. We actually don't need much of. Um, we actually fly direct the runway, yeah. Let's go on 120, 122, this but really think about investing in the active sky. I will, yeah. I, but on the other hand, if you fly by yourself, it doesn't make a difference. It I know. It, it, it doesn't. It's just. I mean, I could turn off if we fly together. We, I could turn on the. The racks, but I have the racks installed. But I don't know how to install the rack sweater or how to get the rack sweater in. That's Which easy. topic you select on the main page? Was uh, it you go where? at the top, at the top, it says... Yes, guy. No, 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 when you... When, at the top, it says dashboard, then weather engine, ink, uh, in sync engine, and network mode, and then it says view more. I don't know if you have it on right now. No, 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 I'm not now. Yeah, I show next, it to you later. Next time, next time, yeah. It's literally just you say follow aircraft and th that's it. Then it, it updates the weather around you. A Piper. Yeah, you don't know Piper. It's one of the biggest airline manufacturers in the world. Piper. Yeah, I do. I yeah. didn't realize that it was that popular, yeah. We, we, like we have the Piper Archer 2 which has a similar cockpit so so we our Piper is, is really cool our Piper in the in the Verein has now we the primary flight display you see in the middle right mm -hmm. we have now a Garmin a digital one it's really cool nice on both sides, no, it's, or? It's, um, I, I can show you a picture. We bought it le yeah, last year, and it's really cool. Very bumpy right right now for me. Yeah. Terrain is coming up. I think we're a little bit high. Uh, low, I mean. I think so too. Yeah. Q and H is okay though. Look, that's the cockpit of ours. Of our plane. I send it to you on WhatsApp. That's the new Garmin. Um, digital. It's a digital. Yeah, it's PFD. cool. That's the one I want to fly in summer. I want to fly the Piper. I I'd never flew with it before. And also the NAV display, you see it's digital too. Yeah, that's pretty cool too. I saw that, yeah. Yeah, but it's only on the left side, right? On the right side, it, the PFD is still the mechanical one. Right. I mean, in my Katana, I have even better. It's a cheap version. It's called the Aspen 1000. You have, can you Google Aspen 1000? That's the one I have in my katana. It's it's a really cool gadget. It it's actually your PFD and your 
uh, the whole section PFT and and the beneath you change this and then you have actually your GPS and your that's what we have in our katanas. You see the Aspen? Yeah, I do. I love it. It's it, uh, it's, it's cheap. Really it only costs fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand? Mm -hmm. No, it's no. Yeah, no, that's no, what I saw no. it. No, no, uh, no. La Payette Avionics, but as PFD, PFD 1000, PFD 1000, $9,600 at Advanced Aero Technologies. No, I see it here for 4,000 euros. It probably depends it's, where you buy it, obviously. Well, you know, for those instruments, this is a highly, I don't know, you have actually a digital, you have everything in now as a, it's really cool. Well, I didn't. Are anyway, you a little bit too fast because you're like already five miles ahead of me again? No, I'm. I I accelerated. Yeah, you gotta be careful because you're like ten miles away from the airport. So the asp, I really like it. Like today, we have five katanas, uh, four katanas, and two have no. We have five katanas and three have the asp. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you something real quick? So if I look at the Garmin, right? Yeah. It shows me there's this yellow. If you look at the airport, if you zoom in a little bit more at 15 zoom, yeah. it says you see this yellow archway. And is that the ILS approach? Or what is that? Yeah, that's the ILS. Sir. Okay. But it doesn't show you on our one, on 3 4, it doesn't show that, right? But you can actually make us an ILS approach with this plane if you want. No, we don't need to. I I, I want to fly oh, manually. No. That's fine. It, no, we don't have on three four. There is no ILS. It's yeah. just on zero eight. Okay. And all, only on on one side of the runway, right? There's an ILS approach on the other yeah. side. There's no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It is bumpy. Holy yeah. crap! You can see in the Garmin actually the frequency of the ILS. Then you give it in. How do you see it? How do you see it? Hold on, hold on. How do you see the frequency? Um, and then you go here on. Um, do we not need to take a slight right turn now to align with the with the runway? Yeah, we can. We can, yeah. So I can leave altitude hold on, but take off nav select red, and then just fly manually and I'll fly a little bit to the right. No, I turn it off the autopilot. I'm gonna keep altitude hold on for right now. And if you wanna, I show you, if when you are at the ground, I show you the. I fly direct now. I fly. I make a direct. Swan. A trim. You need the trim, Herb. That's the most important on your. That you don't have to always pull the stick. Mm -hmm. You press the trim button un unless until you can lift the stick off, and then the plane you don't have to do anything anymore. That's Aren't you the flying over the airport already? No. Then the V. Then the V pilot is not accurate. I think you you are. Yeah, maybe it's not accurate. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna take over manual too, and I need to concentrate now. What's the approach speed? Uh, approach speed is uh, ninety. Speed is gone so quick with this uh, terrain, and if you yeah, it is to be so careful. And I'm used, you're used to that. That 
it's not there right away if, with my single pi engine piston, not turbo engine, not turbo prop. If you apply thrust, it, you, you see it immediately, you know. Mm -hmm. And here it's actually. Um, Did you already always, land? Um, no. Okay. I'm on short final. Flaps full. Now I just landed. I make a turn around on the runway. I'm gonna come in, I'm on shot final two. Taxing out. Hey, did you taxi left or right? No, left, right. I'm on the other runway. So usually in the Garmin you can see anything, yeah? Everything, like... Alright, Goose Bay. Finally. Four hundred. I can see you right now, almost uh, touched on some. Oh, yep. Is this true? Yep, I am greasing it, hopefully. Now, touched on? I'm going slow. Ah, oh, that was a smooth landing. Yeah, and you know why? We both, because we c that's the best. When the wind is right exactly from um, your head, you know, you have exact headwind, then it's perfect, you can make the perfect smooth landing. Alright, I'm gonna do a backtrack here real quick and I follow you to the stand. Actually, there's a tech, uh, I'm, I'm following you down. Flaps up. That was probably my nicest landing that I ever did. Very yeah. smooth. Like almost like you could have landed on the egg. That's how soft it was. But I'm actually interested what Project Fight tells me what my feet per minute were for the landing. <clears throat> All right. Wow. Let's switch. Wow. There must be a special event on Watsim. There is um. Wow, in America there is from um, the west coast to the east coast there is hundreds of planes flying in on Watsim right now. Cool. Uh, yeah, somebody on on my stream from Van from Vancouver told me too, that something is going to on to Toronto. I think there is Vancouver Toronto. There's like a hundred f planes from going from Vancouver to uh, Toronto. There must be a special Toronto. Day to day. All right, you took the taxiway over here, right? On twenty six eight. No, I took the the runway. The runway, okay. And then off the runway on the left, or what? Right. 
No, and then on the next left. runway, I mean. And then a left, okay. You don't see me? Uh, let me see where I can see you. Oh yeah, no, I do. Yep. Well, thank you for joining me today. It was nice. Yeah, thank it was a you nice, for having it was a, me. It was, it was a, a nice a VFR flat. I mean, it was... A little bit bumpy, but you know what, we did bumpy it. Bumpy and... Well, we did a good job. No engine failure. We finally figured <laughs> out what's going on with the DS, yeah. Which, by the way, I can now finally switch off. We don't need those anymore. And where you're parking, you just go straight in there, yeah. How does the airport look for you, by the way? What you mean? There's nothing much. There's the, but two buildings here yeah, for me, too. Yeah. It's kind of sad. Parking brake set. And I will go to the left of you here. Engine masters. Ooh. Let me check on. That was a nice flight, yeah. Gonna park right next to you. I can see you. I, I'd be interested in icon Batsim.net. I want to check what's going on in Bat. Alright, so we are switching off our lights. Uh, that is off, that is off. Off, 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 off. Fuel pumps are off anyway. Yeah, as I said, cross the prairie. Prairie, today yeah. is a, Today is a special Vancouver, Toronto, cross the prairie. That's why there's so many planes on Watsim. Tomorrow is Northern Siberia shuttle and Baku fly in and Polish VFR overload. Oh, tomorrow is a VFR overload. That's cool. That's good to know. Poland. They, they, it's, it's amazing that they still have every day different activities on the, our events on Watsim. There's such an active community. It is, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Can you imagine how long it already exists and still alive? Alive and well. Yes. This was Alrighty. it. Alrighty. Um, just Thanks. gonna say goodbye to the guys. This was a nice VFR flight from, for the leg three, from Stephenville. Uh, Labrador to Newfoundland Goose Bay and the next fly will be to Greenland so uh, until next time thanks Chris again and thanks sir see you guys have a good night